won the FA Cup, sat everybody has seen. What about the lads, you know? What do you? Great. I mean, I think it fits the town together. Oh, the best party. You know what I mean? I, I mean, the party must have went oh, on. Oh, every night. So all days, oh, after Saturday after the match. Oh, Sunday, Monday. Statue, man. I mean, Jackson I don't think anybody went to work today. Old Frankie and the likes of my father, who's 60, 70 year old, and they, on Saturday to see their faces, to actually see Hartlepool United for once win promotion. Uh, my father was ecstatic, 65 year old. He just, he was like a boy. that the players got after the game and the atmosphere on the day was, was second to none. It was, it was absolutely superb. The stories that I've had from the people in the town is that Saturday night, two o'clock in the morning, they were still singing and dancing in the streets. Gary Gibson, Chairman Hartlepool United Football Club. Can I speak to the Chief Executive, please, Brian Dinsdale? Two years ago, property dealer Gary Gibson came to the rescue of a football club facing disaster. Relegation from the Football League. Now, Hartlepool United are on the way up, celebrating promotion to the third division. Yeah, we had a good day. We, uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. We had a late night on the Saturday night. We didn't get in for about two o'clock, so none of the wives are speaking with the directors, but uh, as we say, it only happens once every 20 odd years. So we to celebrate your successes as they say. I joined the board, it was £30,000 to join the board at that time and uh, I just did it, something you do when you're with £30,000 you don't know what to do with. Um, it, I just I fancied it, I thought I would learn from the experience of, of dealing with the press and, and dealing with a board of directors because in my business principally I make 99% of the decisions. And really when I got there and had a look round, um, the, the chairman's job became vacant and I, I, you know, I thought I would uh, make it probably a better chairman than, than perhaps they might have had in the past, so I threw my hat in the ring and, and took it on. It's not a hobby? It's anything but a hobby. It's a business uh, approached hopefully in a business-like way um, where difficult decisions are made um, and, you know, uh, I think that policy is paying off. It, it, it's too expensive. Um, a thing and it's there's too much at stake for it just to be treated like a hobby. It has been a hobby for 83 years, it's not anymore. 20 miles away, Richard Corden arrived to bail out another sinking team. An industrial scaffolder, he was prepared to risk his fortune on the club where he was once a player. Hi, Irene. Kettle on. Was there any point, though, when you felt you'd made a mistake putting so much money into the club? Well, not really. Uh, I think you always think that, but not really, because um, as far as I was concerned, we've got a good manager, and I put all my faith in him, the same as the players did. And uh, we gave him the backing, and obviously it's paid off. But no doubt you've spent a lot of money on Darlington Football Club. I mean, do you keep a total of how much you've put into the club? Would you know? I haven't got a clue. Money you put into a football club, you never get back. We've been talking to uh, potential directors, if you like, and, and some of them have said, well, if I put money into the club, what return do I get on it? There's no return. If I put money into a football club, it's gone. Well, you've seen both success and failure at Darlington just in, in the space of two years. What advice would you give to um, would-be chairman or directors? Keep away. <laughs> No, it, it's, if, if you're a football fan, the enjoyment's there, and uh, it, it, I've enjoyed it. What was the atmosphere like at the club when you came? Um, I think an air of resignation. The, to avoid relegation to the Vauxhall Conference was a major success. I mean, given the fact that the club's been relegated a record, I think it's 14 times, um, that was the measure of success. If you could, if you could win a couple of games in the cup uh, and, and avoid relegation mid-table, um, people were over the moon with that. There had been a bit of a power struggle um, between the previous chairman and, a, and, a, and another guy, an outsider, who was trying to uh, move in. 
but that, that came to nothing. Um, so that had affected the club, I think, a lot. But did people feel that they, weren't, they didn't have a chance of getting promotion? Well, given the fact that the, the, prior to uh, last weekend it had only happened once in 83 years, I think it was a reasonable assumption. Gary Gibson moved into Hartlepool United when it was the joke club of the Football League. With a shabby ground and a lack of sponsors, it was losing £1,000 a week. Two years ago, Northern Eye looked at Hartlepool's life at the bottom. We found a club struggling to survive, where players, directors and managers didn't last long. Every knock on the door was guaranteed to herald more bad news. The first game of the season, I'm actually in this office talking to a press man. Uh, some lad down from London was asking, how do you think we're going to do the usual pre-season preamble? And uh, there's a knock at the door, and I ignored it. And there's another knock on the door, and the third knock, I said, well, you come in, what do you want, who are you? He said, I'm the bailiff. And immediately you start the season thinking, well, that's a good start. Well, I have played a game on Saturday, and now we've got a bailiff knock on the door already. We've had the bailiffs in quite a few. The first, the first thing I had to do, actually, five years ago, was try and stop somebody taking the goalpost. It was sad, but at the end of it, we, we laughed about it. Uh, they took the goalpost, left the crossbar, so I don't know what they're going to do with the goalpost. It's sad that they do come in, actually, but we now have a good relationship with the birth. On the pitch, things were worse. Bobby Moncur became one more casualty of Hartlepool's flair for failure. Even the most loyal fans were despondent. Personally, as a loyal supporter, I do not feel as if we're getting full value for our money. Certainly are. I would say the fans of this the town, very, very United patient, Football very, very Club, very over many years have been very, very patient. And, and it's up to them behind the scenes to, give us to, to relax back. us and yeah. to get the crowd behind them. My personal contribution to Hartlepool United is in the region of about £2,000 a year and that comes via uh, two season tickets for myself and my son. Uh, I buy a match programme for my son and I every game. I put £10 every Wednesday night over the bar in the social club. I contribute £2 a week to pools on the move. Mm -hmm. And adding all that up over a period of 12 months amounts to almost 2,000 quid. There's a white notice. Uh, <laughs> Some fans may have been spending two thousand pounds a season, but Gary Gibson arrived bearing two hundred thousand. Thank you very much. A lot of people, if they had two hundred thousand pounds to be able to write out on a cheque, would not have written it out to Hartlepool United Football Club. Uh, three weeks ago, I wouldn't have written a cheque out for, for that sort of money. I said anybody that would write a cheque for two hundred thousand pounds was crazy. Uh, a week after that, I changed my mind. For the simple reason I couldn't see anybody else doing it. I mean. Uh, the way things looked from my position, there was nothing was going to happen and we were going to limp along and uh, relegation looked imminent at that stage, so I thought I would do it. Now you're a businessman, so what do you think would represent value for money for that sort of investment? Value for money? Well, for Hartlepool to do something, uh, not limp along, not, not be in the fourth division forever, but, but uh, to provide a base so that we can get into the third division, maybe next year, the year after, after next, and then, you know, let's dream about the second division. For Darlington, 1989 started as a year of nightmares, not dreams. Defeat followed defeat. They were the worst club in the Football League. A new manager, Brian Little, was brought in to save the club from relegation. He failed. After this defeat, Darlington were consigned to the small-time world of non-league football. For the club and fans, this was football at its hardest and most painful. It was a very sad time for the club. And after the game, the fans stood in the ground chanting for the team and giving a lot of support. And a lot of them were sitting about crying and I went into the dressing room and 
asked Brian if he could bring them out, just to sort of give, them, give the crowd a wave. Um, they came out with shirts off, boots off, some with no stockings on at all, and uh, threw some of the shirts to the crowd and gave them a wave, you know, and I, I thought, well, you know, there must have been about a thousand there, and I thought, well, if we're going to get support like this, we've got to try and get this lot back again, you see, and Brian and I sat in the stand for quite a while after that, just talking, because his contract was till the end of the season. I said, well, if you stay on, I will. So we agreed, and uh, he did. We gave him a, a contract, and uh, he's done the business for us. A little bit of bend. It was a risk. Little had been sacked from his only other managerial job at Wolves. The sacking left painful memories. It's left a scar on me, and there's still a scar there, without a doubt. Um, you know, I went to, I can remember going home that day, and, and uh, my two boys were very young. I think they were four-year-old and, and one-year-old, and uh, to walk in and say to my wife, uh, I haven't got a job anymore, and to look at the kids. Uh, if there ever was a point in, in my football career where I, I felt I might get out of it, that was it. Uh, but thankfully, Bruce Rioch uh, gave me an opportunity to work at Middlesbrough Football Club, and uh, you know I'm, I'm still working in football. But there are times, and I think that was the sort of time which uh, does leave a scar on you, and that's still there. And uh, that in itself is a motivation for me to do well in, in football. Little did do well. He planned to take Darlington back into Division 4 within two years. But his team returned after just 12 months. If we hadn't got up in two years, I think the people of Darlington might well have lost a little bit of interest in watching conference football. So therefore, uh, the gates would have dropped well down again and it would have been financially impossible to have carried on a full-time staff. So, I think the outcome of that would have been a part-time football club.